The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more in the breach, dear friends, and as always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And we're having a little fun. If you didn't hear the pre-show music, The Magnificent Seven. I knew the new movie, uh, movie was coming out, but didn't know it was already out. I'll have to check uh, Rotten Tomatoes here at the break to see if it's any good. I liked a couple people in it. Uh, I kind of disliked the fact that they probably should have had um, the actor that was in Deadwood and in uh, he had another TV series that I watched on USA or something like that that was real great where he was a marshal. But uh, I think he's kind of the best cowboy we have right now. But uh, he wasn't in the movie, so I'm a little upset about that. He was excellent, Deadwood. He was the, the cowboy. Uh, what else do we have there? Timothy Oliphant. Oliphant, I think is his name. Eh, we'll find out. I'll check during the break. As always, what do we have going on in this market? Well, uh, kind of like when I grew up, uh, the saying was, if you don't like the, the weather, just wait 10 minutes. Uh, we are up 20 points on the S&P cash. Uh, the difference, though, is kind of the volume. We're pushing 2.3 billion shares as we start the show. That would figure out to about 3.3 billion for a Friday. Uh, so volume is not going to be a great on the upside here. Uh, we also have, of course, the end of quarter and a little bit of painting the tape today. Uh, and my thoughts are uh, we and risk reward do not get any better. In fact, I told one of my subscribers today that I thought it was Christmas. It was Christmas, early Christmas, because guess what? The risk reward for being short does not get any better than it gets today. You got light volume, you push back high, you're into uh, the end of the quarter uh, where everybody wants to make sure that uh, they get their bonuses and their Christmas bonuses. And uh, if they have to uh, paint a little bit of, uh, of this, not a big deal. If they have to put some lipstick on it. Well, let's put some lipstick on this pig. They will do it. So we've got uh, the, the lipstick on the pig. And probably the most bearish thing that we could see today from previous times when they painted the tape like this would be about a five to six point drop into the close today. And again, uh, volume was pretty brisk in the morning. It has evaporated over the last uh, two, two and a half hours. Uh, 2.3 billion shares for a 20 point move, uh, at least recently. And uh, just a lot of people uh, pushing and shoving in this market. Uh, but we get back up to these levels, mostly around 2165, and the volume just totally drops out of the market, which has happened yet again today. Um, I dis, uh, also dislike thinking the market's going to go much higher. There just aren't that many shorts to squeeze, and uh, why we've had limited upside and very quick downside movements. Um, could I be wrong? Uh, I can always be wrong. Uh, and uh, one of the greatest books I ever read about the stock market was Fooled by Randomness. Uh, Nassim Tlaib is sitting in with a bunch of uh, folk at a meeting. He's talking about whether he's bullish or bearish. And he says, uh, well, I'm, I think the market could go up 20 points. And I think there's 80% chance of that. It can go 20 points up before the end of the week. And he says, uh, so I think I'm going to buy more puts. And everybody stares at him and yells at him. And what? Wait, you think it's going higher? You think it's going higher? Uh, yeah. So I've got to buy puts, hey, because uh, if uh, everybody thinks the market's going higher, then guess what? The downside is horribly mispriced. And I would take that uh, view today. Uh, it could go higher, and the market could go to 2,100 over the next few days. 
Um, I just don't see that 30 points higher compared to 200 points lower for not just a day, but uh, maybe over the next month, uh, certainly uh, does not interest me uh, to be walking into a market that was built on sand. I know this uh, at least because uh, I trade with volume. Uh, 2.3 billion shares does not uh, rock my boat, uh, does not float it, does not even launch it. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're up here at these highs, you should have some high volume. Um, is it impossible to see markets go higher, uh, spike for one day, and then fall apart? The answer is no. Maybe we get volume. But until we get volume, I will play defensively in this market. And uh, for me today, buying options, especially puts, is like Christmas. Because guess what? If we're going higher, it's probably slightly higher. If we're going lower, it's a hell of a lot lower. Watch out below. Watch out for falling prices. There will be a giant sucking sound. Well, I can also say that about uh, one of the indicators we've talked about this week. So we will also get into that. Let's uh, start the show at least to begin with. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1981, Uncle Sam issues new 20-year Treasury bonds at 15.78% yield, an all-time record high interest rate for any U.S. government issue. Analysts say they expect that the yields will have to go higher to attract strong, stronger demands. Yields promptly begin going down and keep going down for the next 12 years. <laughs> well, I guess if you're wrong, you might as well be wrong big, right? This day in uh, 1981. Uh, after the bell on Monday, we've got the container store, kind of recent IPO that's done poorly. Uh, after the bell on Wednesday, we've got Yum. We just do not have that much going on in this market. And now to the headline story out here as far as I can say, and the risk in this market and that is the TLT. We've talked about this thing doing its ABC down. I can easily see this coming back down to 128 uh, and even lower. This may be the biggest trend change that I've seen. There aren't a lot of good indications in the market. Uh, we talked about the spike uh, in, to 139.15 being possibly uh, the biggest signal that I could find in the market and a long-term signal. Uh, not only that, uh, that it would set up a longer term. Let's get into the longer term out here. Uh, ABC down, uh, that being the July 8th high at 143.62, uh, the September 15th low at 133.09, and yesterday being the C point at the September 8th high. I haven't talked many about many, I haven't called many shots, let me put that on the air. Uh, mostly I say, okay, there's a ton of stocks up here that are uh, testing highs at lighter volume, or there are a bunch of stocks down here at lows testing lows with lighter volume, and that kind of defines the way I look in the market. Uh, the indexes can do a lot of things short term, but generally it's hard when the entire market is testing lows uh, on lighter volume to get me bearish, and there's very hard to get me uh, excited about going long when they're testing highs with a lighter volume. So uh, yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bull. Remember, there's no uh, bull side or bear side. There's only the right side. And uh, we will find out more about that after this short commercial timeout. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software.
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And the TLT uh, off a uh, buck 45, uh, 137.30. Um, I don't think that there's a more important uh, indicator out here right now in the market than that. Uh, a little color, of course, uh, going into a weekend. Um, but uh, volume has turned to dust, uh, 2.35 billion shares uh, as we get into the bottom of the hour, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. I would appreciate your phone calls. And, of course, always tell two people about the Power Trading Hour. And he tells two friends, and she tells two friends, and, and so, so on, on, and, and so, so on, on, and so on. That's right. Tell everybody. They must listen to the show. Uh, what else do we have going on here? We'll look at a few others. One, I wanted to see how some of these stocks uh, reacted. Uh, we've been going through a few of these. And uh, still kind of kind of nervous. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, let's go here for a little longer. Um, one of the things that I look at in a market is exactly what we see in MasterCard. And... We have not had this for a, probably a year and a half in many of these big stocks. So I'm wanna, I want to tear it down like they do in the game film and show you what uh, I see out here in the markets uh, based on individual stocks in the market, not uh, as uh, what we see of uh, 500 stocks or 300 stocks in the Dow, but something that seems to be a much more uh, prominent theme. And what we see uh, many times in this market, which is uh, a lot of volume in the indexes and no real volume in the underlying equities, which always makes me nervous. But uh, here is the way I am looking at uh, this market. So it'll give you a good idea. At least on MasterCard is kind of a good idea because I think this is the template that I have right now. Now, again, I could be wrong. And as one of the best traders in the den says, I'm often wrong. I'm just, uh, when I'm right, uh, very, very right. When I'm wrong, I try to be wrong a little. Uh, like I said, this is one of the days that I think is almost like Christmas out here. 
because uh, I'm going to be very little wrong or very, very right. And the price is right on options today. November 11th, we have a nice little volume uh, move up here to 101.76 on MasterCard. It comes in with 5.5 million shares. Uh, you come in, but unable to test it on April 28th, but you have higher volume, so you know you're going to get back up to the level again. Now, what we have again, of course, is the last few days back up at these highs. Uh, 3.4 million shares on the 22nd. The next day, we got 2.7 million shares, 3.4, 3.5. Uh, 3.63 uh, yesterday, uh, 1.8, 1.9 today so far. Uh, not a lot of juice, but here's the bigger pattern. The volumes at the highs are interesting, but to me the bigger pattern is, and that is that November 11th high out here to the February 9th low, you had enormous volume uh, all the way back down. You also have an untested low at 78. 52. Well, if you look at my power law vector indicator number, the energy off that November 11th high to that February 9th low came in with barn loads of volume, a 5.4. It bounces on 4.4 back up to that 100 April 28th high. It pulls back about a 50% range and then moves back up. But guess what? The energy is, isn't even that 4.5 weeky move up to 100. It's 3.6. The energy continues to pull out of this as it goes back into the market highs. Uh, that is telling me that there's something very different going on uh, than usual. Um, for the last year, uh, if uh, the market uh, came down on 5.5, they they went right back up on 5.5 or maybe five. It was you know it was close. Um, to see all the energy really kind of drop out um, from that, uh, even if you just compared the February 9th low to this April 28th high, and then compare the June 6th low to this uh, September 29th high, I just do not see the juice that makes me think anything's really going on out here other than a bigger trading range. Uh, and when I see this kind of pattern out here, my first inclination is to pull the ripcord and say short uh, with all my might. Uh, you've got lighter volume at the highs. You've got less energy. You have more energy on the downside into these markets. And um, this is kind of how they set up. Now, I don't know why MasterCard would be setting up for highs out here. Maybe people not using their credit card as much. Maybe higher interest rates mean that uh, people will have learned their lesson from the last uh, end of the world cycle in 2008 and not put every dime they can on it. Or maybe uh, they've got every dime already they have on uh, credit cards. Hard to tell. But uh, this is kind of what I'm looking at and a great deal of these stocks. Lighter volume tests of highs. Heavy volume down in previous legs. The legs first came up and not enough volume. Pull back, but then on this last leg, the juice has just not been here. Now, again, as I say, volume could come in Monday. And as Mr. Keynes said, uh, when the facts change, I am more than willing to change my opinion. What do you do, sir? When asked when he was uh, Maynard Keynes, when he asked about changing his opinion on the market. So I am more than willing to say I am wrong, 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 wrong. In fact, you, I wonder as a trader, should we just get up every day and go, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Just so to get you in the habit of being wrong. Uh, but uh, you're not, not thinking a whole lot about it. I can only imagine being a baseball player and going, you know what? I just hit five home runs, but I struck out the last 10 times. Of course, uh, home run, eh, you get a little tick on the scoreboard. Uh, you may have gotten a bunch of hits, but maybe no little ticks on the scoreboard and that's what it is it's asymmetrical return on the market and that's what always has interested me for the uh, pretty much for the last 15 years of, the, of my trading and that is not being so concerned with being right but wrong just a little and right a whole lot when I am uh, because uh, when you can ride that wave of a new trend and hold on to it like the Brocking Bronco that it is uh, where real riches and real will, I can't even say it, real will, real, where, real 
wealth comes from. He said. Anyway, uh, 21, uh, 2171, let's call it 2172. Volume is just coming in at 2.4 billion shares. Uh, of course, uh, we had, what, uh, 4.3 billion shares yesterday. So uh, don't think we're going to get anywhere close to that. Um, you know, maybe things change on Monday, but uh, I don't think so. I think maybe we're just painting that tape, putting the lipstick on the pig today. But uh, guess what? I'll only have to be wrong for a day or two next week to uh, hold my positions if I am wrong. Uh, other things going on in the market. Had a discussion today with uh, John Logan earlier in the day. Had a few questions about that in the emails. I will talk a little bit about it. Uh, but uh, the question was kind of about CRM and Microsoft. So we'll talk just a little bit more about that. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we are back. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, oh, we were talking about Salesforce. Um, <clears throat> what do we have out here? Um, uh, well, uh, I guess the big deal, of course, that came out this morning was that Salesforce uh, CEO uh, Benioff, uh, I guess last night actually, wants the government to step in and make sure Microsoft does not get 
LinkedIn. And we talked a little bit on John Logan's show about why, uh, but uh, I'll put it in a nutshell, and that is that uh, everybody wants to get into the business of a company called Slack. They are kind of like email for inside your company and kind of a combination of email and Twitter and Facebook inside a company. And the real power of this is that you get to decide who can email you or send stuff to you or do stuff. And it's an opt-in system where anybody in the world can send you email. Um, but uh, what else did we see out here in this? And Salesforce made an offer on, on uh, LinkedIn, but it wanted to give a bunch of stock. And uh, Microsoft said, nah, we'll do it. We'll just give you cash. Uh, we'll put it in some restrictions, but uh, for the most part, um, the, the, you know, it was kind of a cash deal for Microsoft where Salesforce was going to have to give up a lot of its stock. And in retrospect, probably a pretty good idea uh, from the LinkedIn crowd to take the cash, take the money and run. But uh, there is a school of thought, and it mostly was started by the CEO of Oracle. And that was uh, a lot of his reading of the art of war. But uh, you're supposed to annoy your uh, opponents uh, is a big part of it. And I think that's just part of what uh, Benioff is doing out here is trying to annoy uh, Microsoft, to distract them with other ideas. Very tough for me to see that anybody in the world thinks that LinkedIn is going to be a problem if nothing else has been. Uh, for the current administration, uh, for uh, for the most part, at least in the this sector of the market, the semis. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's ever going to come to anything. Uh, but certainly, it is going to be a big deal for Microsoft uh, getting that stuff in the platform ready for Microsoft's version of Slack uh, that they can slide back in with all the other stuff that they already do. It's an easy sale, and uh, all the money that uh, they're paying for LinkedIn, uh, for the most part, I'm thinking that it's going to be uh, paid for in about three years once they get the Slack competitor out. This is a big market, and the reason they need LinkedIn, of course, is to uh, give them a uh, bed of 200, customer, 200 million customers uh, to go to uh, that have confirmed email addresses. Uh, they will probably put together some kind of uh, uh, LinkedIn, uh, quote, quote, system uh, for email. So you know that it comes from somebody else that's qualified as a real uh, industry professional, maybe in your sector. Um, but uh, the whole idea is to try to keep a walled garden uh, in the email department and in the communications department of your company. And uh, I think it's a good idea. Uh, of course, uh, Salesforce has come down on some pretty heavy volume. Um, I've always thought that there was some problems out here uh, with Salesforce. The biggest ones were last year when the CEO uh, really got kind of a uh, uh, fairly blowhardy and maybe a little bit Nazi-like uh, in the way he was uh, getting into politics. Uh, it's one thing to... Uh, Say you're for somebody, it's another thing to threaten a sitting a governor that one day will, might, and likely be uh, a uh, vice president. Uh, probably not a real wise thing to do. Uh, but to also have a litmus test that uh, you will only become an employee if you agree 100% with all my political leanings also makes me wonder uh, if there's enough real diversity in something like Salesforce. Um, but... Uh, I think they're a good company. There's just uh, right now vastly overpriced, like just about everything in the market. Uh, and uh, not surprised. This thing's headed back down to the $65 level. I will not be surprised uh, when it hits those, all those gaps down there uh, that we've been talking about and how many of these stocks have been and are going to head back to all these multiple gap areas. In the case of Salesforce, uh, you got a gap uh, on the fourth, of February, it gaps back down again on the 5th of February. Uh, you get back through that range again on the 25th of February. 
I mean, th these gaps just absolutely are everywhere uh, in this, uh, and, you know, let's call it what, the 62 to $67 range. And I think that's going to be a big deal um, come out here. Um, I would have liked to seen the the low actually or the high actually tested in sales force. So I'm not predicting uh, the end of the world, but at least coming back and testing that gap around 65, I think would be fairly likely. Uh, what else about uh, Microsoft and Salesforce? I think that was about it. Oh, there was another question. Uh, I think with John Logan, we didn't have enough time to get to, and that is a lot of people talking about artificial intelligence. I think that term is gone. I don't think that many people think about using it anymore, at least in Silicon Valley. There is no intelligence uh, to uh, most of what's being used in Silicon Valley. Uh, it is a algorithms that get smarter on their own, but those algorithms were written by somebody. It's not like they're getting any more intelligent. They just use statistics to make better uh, decisions and decisions that humans can't make because the problems are too tough. But it's not artificial intelligence. Uh, it are, there are, they are learning algorithms and why it's called machine learning and not artificial intelligence. There's no real intelligence. It's not like if you set something down in front of somebody, the computer could figure it out all on its own. Uh, you have to teach the computer uh, to learn all the various problems that are being solved by these machine learning algorithms. So there's nothing out there that's artificial uh, in that. Um, and again, it may take, um, you know, there's about 8,000 different learning algorithms it may take you going through all 8,000 to find the one that works for your particular problem. I don't think that's any artificial intelligence. If you could just uh, set a computer in front of something and it can figure it out, maybe that's more artificial intelligence. But uh, if you've got to spend uh, months, uh, maybe even years, working out the details and teaching the computer and playing with the algorithms to get it right, I don't think that's very artificial. I think that's a lot of human effort involved, and in it. it's not just driving around the street by itself. Anyway, we're going to go to break. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. And uh, what else can you say about it? Email me at path at tfnn.com. We've got a couple of emails. We'll try to uh, figure those out. But uh, I think it's Christmas. It's starting to look a lot like Christmas. It's the happiest time of the year. That's when options are low and volatility are high. We'll be back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Focus Commodity CD from EverBank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to six equally weighted commodities, including gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 50% per component, you could earn up to a 50% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal 
principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The October 13th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And uh, somebody in the den says they're about ready to take their ball and go home here before the 4 o'clock close. I would say that uh, you might want to go walk the dog and come back. I'm going to say that about 80% of the time you get a move in the last five minutes before the close in these quarterly move in these uh, quarterly uh, in things. So you probably want to hang on. Uh, it's kind of like at the end of the movie where maybe there's something after the credits and they don't tell you and you leave before it happens and then you find out later. Uh, I'm not saying a lot's going to happen in the next hour. Volume certainly doesn't show it. But I think you'd probably want to show up in the last few minutes of the day. 2.5 billion shares in the New York Stock Exchange Consolidated Tape. And uh, we all know what that is. Yes, it is not uh, hefty, hefty, hefty. It is wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. So we will uh, continue on uh, with the show. I uh, wanted to look at here at uh, the RIDAX Equal Weight S&P um, chart because uh, I think it is telling you a great deal more out here, especially when we look at the volumes. Um, you know, yesterday, one million shares in this, uh, one million shares the day before, 630,000 shares. Um, and, of course, we kind of got into it with 843,000 shares on the 22nd. Uh, 542,000 shares today. That does not sound to me like a market that is uh, going bonkers uh, for Cocoa Pops, but that's just me. Uh, other stocks of interest, of course, a lot of interest out here in the semis. I would be wary. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor um, is uh, trying to retest its high out here. That's the September 22nd high, $30.95. Uh, kind of pushing up today into that uh, 8 million share high with uh, 3.7 million shares. So there's a, a huge winner. Man, people can't wait to get in to TSM. Uh, I think that there is a reason, though, and that is that they're going to start spending a great deal of money in the near future to keep up with Intel. Uh, the question is, when do those, uh, when do those actually hit? Uh, I had another question in the uh, email. Again, you can call me at 877-927-6648 about Amazon. Uh, as we said, in the last couple of days, we've seen some big shorting. Let's get uh, down here, out here. Some fairly large shorting in comparison to anything lately uh, in Amazon. Uh, and kind of going to a little higher high out here. 2.8 million shares so far today compared to five, oh, almost 5 million yesterday. Well, that's a sign of strength, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Monday, Tuesday, maybe something else comes in. But today, all I'm seeing in individual stocks is uh, wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. IBM, another one out here. Uh, yesterday, we had a, a big spike uh, with a bad tick in it. 
I'm still waiting to figure out if there's any way to fix that. Apparently, there were some shares traded, but it was all uh, in, what, like five microseconds. And I think the trades were busted, but it's going to be hard to figure out exactly which ones they are. Maybe they get that cleaned up this week. Uh, but uh, what do we have today? Uh, yesterday, 3.4 million shares. Today, 1.9. And what is this? It's 245. Someone's got to get on the stick if they're if we're supposed to be throwing a rally. Uh, they need to let us know by uh, putting their money where their mouth is. Of course, you don't know where that mouth has been. Uh, let's see if there's anything else up here. Let's take a look at CIT. We've been looking at this one for a while. Um, I wanted to see how this one came up. It was a little light, about 500,000 uh, shares light on September 1st, uh, breaking the March 18th high. Uh, again, I like to see these things break the highs on about 50% of the volume. Uh, so that'd be looking at about 1.6. Well, we got about 1.15 million shares today. And uh, again, uh, as I'm talking about how the energy comes into these markets, um, we've got about the same thing. You get the energy off the February 11th low at 25.19, and it races with a ton of volume to the March 18th high. Now, back and forth, we back and forth, we do about a 50% retracement down to this June 27th low, and then we go all the way back up uh, to new highs, uh, close back underneath them, but the energy on this leg is nothing like the energy we had back there on that February 11th to the March 18th leg. If you can't see it on my power law vector indicator, 4.5 on that uh, February 11th to March 18th high, just 2.8 from the June 27th to the September 1st high. So do you get one more retest of the high, maybe 36, 37 out of this? Eh, maybe we do on Monday. I just, uh, I'm not seeing any kind of deliberate stampede higher, unlike the stampede we saw lower yesterday. 2173 on the S&P cash, volume crawling 2.54 billion shares. Uh, Duncan Donuts, uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, breaking uh, to new highs, so we should be seeing some volume uh, somewhere in the 1.6 million share range. Uh, what do we have? 1.88. Okay, we've got a winner. Maybe the cops are ready to start heading back to Dunkin' Donuts and sitting around there as their adjunct office. Probably not, uh, but uh, we can keep an eye on it. But uh, let's look at this just a little bit farther. But uh, as one that actually has volume... Uh, where so many don't, uh, not too bad. I still don't like the energy on this leg so far from the June 27th low up today's high. It's not all that exciting. Um, so we'll continue on. Uh, LL, which is Lumber Liquidators. Um, this one is getting back into its resistance. Level. If you go back to September 16th or December 16th, 2015, $18 dollars 87 cents, 4.9 million shares, spiked it yesterday with a 2.1 million shares, came back into it, uh, pressing it again today with this 780,000 shares. Um, I'm going to just about bet you without even looking, this thing is massively short still, uh, but uh, at the same time, so I wouldn't short it, but at the same time, uh, certainly going back into these spikes uh, back here on o October 9th, uh, that is going to have a lot of overhead resistance if anybody stuck it through on lumber liquidators. Uh, Rilogy. Um, eh, this is kind of one that actually, uh, if the market would turn around, I'd be uh, thinking a little bit more about. Uh, it may need another week going sideways out here, but I always uh, like these stocks as a, that are actually do have a sign of accumulation, and that is very narrow ranges. Let's uh, just zoom in on this. Um, this is what I dislike about the market in general at the highs and what I like about this particular stock at the lows, and that is at the highs, if you see a pattern like this, you're assuming that every time it ticks higher, somebody's there as a seller, and that's why the stock doesn't go any higher. At the lows, if the market just goes sideways, what's happening? Well, every tick lower, there's a buyer. So this thing's been going sideways since September 13th. Um, and we talked about this for a little a while, I think a day or two ago. 
But uh, not a whole lot of stocks like this. If I'm desperately wrong, then maybe this is the kind of stock to start looking at. Um, but I like stocks out there that at least have some kind of signal that someone's trying to accumulate them. Uh, this is one of the few out there, RLGY. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And one of the things that I figured out in the last year is uh, watch out for everybody shorting a particular stock, always a good time to uh, take the money and run. Uh, Deutsche Bank yesterday had one of the biggest days of shorting. And, of course, uh, I don't like it when anybody else thinks the stock that I have is a short candidate. I kind of like it when there's nobody else. That means there aren't a lot of natural buyers when it goes down. And people willing to take a dollar off a stock that would go much lower and delay my gratification when the stock implodes, when I'm short. Uh, but the question is, what's going on out here? I didn't get, I basically ran out of time writing my newsletter this morning, so I'll write a little bit more about this. But, of course, uh, market was down yesterday. We saw the CDLs uh, that were locked up, or at least some reports yesterday in Deutsche Bank. Uh, today we find out that our government uh, is uh, folding like a $5 suitcase, 
um, of course, because the Germans can't do a thing over there. They are mired in the their election cycle. So what did they get uh, to do today? They uh, called up the Justice Department and said, you know, you were asking for $15 billion. Uh, take five, <laughs> because uh, Germans can't do anything. Uh, Merkel is all but done over there. Uh, she went and said, you know, we need to bail out Deutsche Bank and uh, got the middle finger from just about everybody. Her approval rating over there is at about 10 percent. Um, I don't know of any, uh, I think, uh, think uh, if you took an honest poll, uh, you might even find that number higher in North Korea for its leader. Uh, but uh, everybody pretty much disgusted with uh, what's going on, especially if you live in the five major cities of Germany. They've allowed a lot of people to come in. And uh, even though a small fraction of those folks uh, are doing badly and acting badly, uh, you can't, if you're a woman, even go out on streets uh, in Germany on those in the major cities. A uh, roving pack of, uh, of uh, people willing to do you harm, uh, either steal your, rape, uh, steal your stuff or rape you, um, in fact, uh, many, if you read their magazines, uh, many times the, the only women that, uh, the way they can move is uh, by uh, having, having the skinheads uh, over there, the neo-Nazis, escort them, which is absolute bonkers. And one of the reasons why uh, Merkel is all but finished, uh, more finished than uh, Cameron was going into his British exit uh, elections so absolutely nothing that uh, Germany could do. So they had to appeal to us uh, to drop our drawers and make a deal. Um, and I think that tells you a little bit about how nervous everybody is going into this election cycle and everything else going out here. I think the uh, British exit uh, vote uh, started uh, kind of a logjam or unplugged a logjam of discontent uh, uh, with the way that a lot of things are going on. Uh, I don't pay much attention to the polls out here uh, for our election, but I do find it almost comical uh, the way that uh, the uh, people, at least when I flip through at lunch today, uh, are looking at new polls and they're cutting their wrists uh, on the uh, cable tele uh, news stations today. Um, I don't think that the polls at this point actually mean a hill of beans. Probably another couple of weeks we get into October, probably maybe mean something at now too many people flipping back and forth but um just very interesting to see how nutty everybody has become but uh i will uh, i will uh be zen like here and uh go into the weekend as i said with probably the best risk reward for putting on new positions that i will have and uh well at least i've had in the last year in the meantime so when you can not when you have to and I'll see you Monday, bright and shiny, same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.